Hi and welcome back to PJ Maybe. Today I'm going to look at the TV programme Time Team. Full 20 years of it. There's a few reasons I'm going to be looking at it today. The first one is because it was a very special programme for me and my father. And my father passed away last month so I rewatched it in his memory. Second reason is there is talk of a reboot of it or whatever they call it and the third reason was one of my father's favourite parts of the show was uh, the art by Victor Ambrose and he passed away just the week after my father so it was quite poignant so I thought I would rewatch it hence the reason why I've not done a, a, channel, a video for a month so it's a, spe a special programme for me so in that respect what can you say about Time Team? Obviously Time Team is about a group of archaeologists who have three days to uncover historical artefacts and bits and pieces and tell the story of the site they're visiting. Um, usually around Britain but they did do a couple, I think they did one in Amer a couple in America, they did uh, one in Spain, I think they did one in France, a couple in France as well. So it was quite popular so it ran from 94 to 2014 and it had a number of different characters. There was, there's too, few, uh, too many to mention, uh, but the main ones are obviously Tony Robinson, who was the presenter. He was, I suppose, the Baldrick. He was us, the everyman, asking the silly questions. I remember uh, when I started watching it and I kept saying, that Tony Robinson's not very clever. He's, he's, he's asking silly questions, uh, to which my father, turns around and says to me, it's the stupid questions you would ask, so he's doing a perfect job. Doesn't mean he doesn't know, it just means he knows the type of questions you're going to ask. So sometimes Tony Robertson plays the Baldrick very well, sometimes you can see he knows what he's talking about, but he still asks the questions that the rest of us would ask. So as a presenter, Tony does a really good job. It's a it's a programme which is produced, I think, by Tim Taylor. It's, it started off with an, an earlier TV programme um, in 1991 called Time Signs. That was a group of archaeologists who got the opportunity because they were going to dam a valley and the archaeologists got an opportunity to go in after everybody had moved out and they were preparing the site. So it allowed them to look round a living farm which had been occupied for a couple of hundred years so they could look at it and uh, lift, uh, lift up the soil around it and see the progression, how it was built, how it was added to the people who lived there before, things that happened around it. Not as good as Time Team, I must admit, but as a precursor to Time Team, it's definitely something you should watch. So Time Signs is one of the first ones. It's difficult to get, but if you can get it, I would definitely ch uh, check it out. Time Team have got a YouTube channel, so it may be on that. They've also got their website, so I would definitely check both of those. They um, should be able to purchase stuff, maybe even actually purchase the DVDs. But... The group of archaeologists, basically archaeologists, historians, um, geophysics and such like. So you had, apart from Tony, you had Mick Ashton, who to me was one of the best characters on it. Mick passed away in 2013. He was just such a knowledgeable character and he obviously had a passion for the archaeology. I had a pa I loved the Roman side of the archaeological digs and such like, whereas I think Mick didn't. <laughs> he he preferred the prehistory stuff, which I must admit m was my father's favourite. So I suppose because my father used to actually really rewatch those episodes numerous times, that's when I started getting into it and I started watching it as well. So you had Mick Ashton, Phil Harding, one of my dad's favourites again, because of the napping and such like. My dad was very hands-on, 
he could steal things. My father was a monumental mason, so he made headstones, but he could also, he used to do the engraving and such like, so anything that happened within it, anything that people did hands on, he was very interested in it. Um, same as you had the artistic work by Victor Ambrose. He, I think, actually was better because when Victor left, I think he left and they started doing a lot more computer generated. The computer generated, yes, could show you the buildings quite well, but I think Victor's um, artwork could actually allow you to picture it better. His art is, was just phenomenal. Uh, you have a look at some of the early times. Victor's um, obviously he's an artist in his own right. He's basically he's done some books and I think he's actually just a very talented man. And he passed away obviously in February this year. So the world's missing a great artist. Um, you also had, um, as I said, Phil Harding, who was the, the digger of the group, but he was very passionate about um, Neolithic and doing the flint napping and he also got his hands dirty with, they actually asked, they tried to get things done. So, and you had things like John Gator, who was the field archaeologist, who used to go around and actually look at the, the land they were on and try and determine how things have changed and such like, used to check out maps. Then you had Stuart Ainsworth, he was the geophysics, or was it John was geophysics and Stuart? Now there's a thing. I know John and Stuart were there, but one was geophysics and one was field archaeology. I think John was field archeo um, geophysics and Stuart was field archaeology. I've got the two of them round the wrong way. And then you had some of the historians, you had uh, Robin Bush. Um, he passed away in 2010, so he used to do all the, uh, the historical stuff in the libraries, looking at documentation, especially for the Edwardian, uh, Victorian, anything um, looking at the, um, the Doomsday Book and such like. So he would do the research there. You also had Carenza Lewis and Helen Gillick. I can't remember how, I, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her surname, but they did the historical stuff as well. And then you had some of the other diggers like uh, Ratcha, um, and then you had the Francis, who was, he used to take over from Mick at certain times, so they had that. Then you had other ones, like for instance, one of the geologists, like Jimmy. And then you had Matt and Henry, they were, uh, they did uh, the archaeology or they did the surveying and such like, but sometimes they got put in to do some like, like when they were doing the prisons, they, um, they had Jimmy being a prisoner for a day just to see how, what happened, how it worked and such like. And then you had like Matt being the prior and stuff like that. Um, it's actually a very good program. It covers it covered everything. They did a couple of dinosaur digs. I think they were in America. They did Neolithic, Monolithic, um, Victorian, Edwardian. They basically even did some Second World War digs, First World War trenches and such like in France. They did Second World War digs, looking at Lancasters. Um, Spitfires, things that, that crashed and they were recovering them. Um, they worked closely with local archaeologists. Um, it's just one of those programmes which I must admit when I first heard about it I thought, eh, doesn't sound too interesting. Who wants to watch people dig a hole? But as I said, my father watched Time Signs and he was quite interested in it so he recorded it and watched it a number of times and I got caught up in it and yes there's you're watching people talk about their hobbies and their work obviously these people who were doing the archaeology it wasn't just a job to them it was something they were passionate about and I think the passion came across 
Then obviously when you got time teams and you had Tony Robson doing the presenter, being the everyman, the asking the questions that the audience would ask. Because same again, if you're sitting there and they're out, you before time teams you would see something about historical or archaeological, it was usually a professor or a David Attenborough type thing, Richard Attenborough, talking to you, telling you the history of it. This one is they're digging up the history and uncovering it. My father's favourites were when they were looking at the roundhouses, the Neolithic stuff, the um, pre-Roman. He was more interested in that, whereas me, I was more interested in the Roman stuff, so seeing them digging out mosaics and such like, I thought it was just fantastic. My father would say he'd always wished he'd gone to university to study archaeology. He'd gone to university, turned out to be a teacher, and ended up never went, went to be a teacher. He basically became a stonemason and worked with his family um, in the family business. So he always had that wish to have been the archaeologist. So watching these guys digging up and talking about what they found, I think really interested him. My father was very hands-on, so the things like when they were doing the reconstruction, so people actually building the, um, the roundhouse, when they were actually doing the flint knapping to build an axe, or building the henges, the, the, the cut-down versions of the wood henge and such like, he just found that fascinating. And later on in life, when my father got dementia, um, it time team was something that he still watched. The family would put on for him and he would sit there and enjoy it. Things we talked about and he would always remember. And I always used to say to my dad, everybody else he forgot, me he remembered. And I think I could put that down to the fact is we used to sit and gab about TV. I've got the same sense of humour as my father, same interests as my father. And I think it's because I grew up watching the same stuff as my father. Although all this stuff he would think it's too geeky. He's more practical, but we still had interest in the same type of things. I just went a wee bit further with the sci-fi stuff. But, I digress. I would, if you can, get watching Time Team. If you've got any interest in history, you get interest in archaeology, you've got interest on the countryside around you, have a look. Like, for instance, where I stay, I never knew there was a Roman fort along the road. It's no longer there, but it was um, excavated, thir oh, let's see, I think it was the 30s, so 1930, 1940, and they found a lamp, which is in the local museum, uh, the Glasgow Hunterian Museum, and that was found along the road, less than a mile away. So things like that I found out after the fact. So I find it interesting and I think you would find it interesting if you're interested in any of those facts. So go over, check out the Time Team's website, go and check their YouTube channel. They do programmes, they do snippets from programmes, they do interviews and talks. It is something you should have a check at. Obviously, as I said, Time Team is very special to me because it was something me and my father watched together. And any time I watched Time Team, I remember sitting with my fa father and watching it. So, in memory of my father, I thought, rewatch Time Team, full 20 years plus time signs. And although it was emotional, it was fun to watch and remember all the happy times it brought. So, thanks to my dad for giving me that interest. It is something I'll be happy, I'm happy to rewatch and have a collection of Time Team. Would love to, um, would I still like to do, go out and do a dig and do whatever? Yes, I would love to actually be involved in something like that, but getting too old, can't dig, can't move my hand well enough to actually do anything and I'm right handed, so rubbish for my life. So when it comes down to it, I can only watch others do that. So if 
time team gets a reboot or a revamp or whatever they want to call it, I think it will be interesting. Who could they get to actually fill in the slots of, of the people who are missing? With them not having um, Robin doing the historical stuff, they obviously had Helen and Carenza. I can see them coming back. I'm sure they would. Who would cover for Mick? He had Francis. Francis used to do that. And he was very good at it. And the fun part was they had Mick and Francis sometimes. And you could see the two of them really got on well. And they had similar interests. And they liked to argue about certain themes on certain things. So I think that's good. But with Victor, they went away from using the artwork to computers. And yes, computer nowadays you can actually do a lot more, um, but I don't think they could get someone to do that now. There's, it's just not the end thing to watch someone sit drawing and give them their interpretation of it, which is unfortunate because the artwork that he put forward gave life to some of the stories they were telling, whereas the computer artwork doesn't do it. So, I think um, you would still have Phil, he's a bit older now, but you had Ratcha, she's still in the same field and I'm sure they could entice her to come back. You had Matt, who was an archaeologist student by the sound of it at the beginning, but obviously been 20 years there and he's obviously been studying and he's still going forward and he's an archaeologist in his own right, still there. You've still got you've got new um, ge geophysics type things, so they use radar and um, resistivity and such like. And there's more now. I'm sure they could find a lot more using that. And I know some of this stuff just seems to come out of. How can that be interesting? But it's amazing how it all worked together. Like the first episode of Time Team, <laughs> they didn't do any digging, but they found a priory and they used that via geophysics and it showed the full layout of the priory. So the first episode of Time Team didn't do any digging. They rectified that by doing digging all over the place. They even did um, underwater excavations and such like. So some of the stuff they did was unusual. I, d I never liked the underwater ones. No interest in underwater ones. Didn't care about pirates and stuff like that. Yes, seeing the ships, the, um, the cannons coming up and stuff like that. But the underwater excavations just held no interest for me at all. And I think because I was very myopic when it came to the Roman stuff. I did enjoy the other ones, but the interest in some of them just didn't hold me. I liked the World War One, World War Two ones. I liked um, some of the stuff, like for instance, they're doing Hogmount on the Time Team channel. Um, they've been doing that for the last five years, so that's something a few of them have been involved in. Um, I did enjoy certain things like that, but things like the Neolithic stuff, where it's just, there's a postal, couldn't see any difference to me. Obviously my father really enjoyed it because of the interpretation of how they found out about certain things. There's something for everybody there. You could find your passion. So if you like Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, you like um, Victorian stuff, you like um, pre-industrial, you like windmills, you like um, mil um, water mills or whatever, there is something for everyone there and I think Time Team does tell an interesting story of Britain, it also tells an interesting story of your local area, things that they may dig up in Cornwall are still as prevalent in Ayrshire or in the Highlands because it gives you an idea of 
what was happening or what could have been happening right outside your door in the field across the road you don't know another good thing is with the crop maps now with Google Earth people can do more searches and look at the land around them without having to physically drive out and have a look around but you could just even Google Earth your surrounding areas and look see if there's any crop maps see if anything's been done about it look up the history of your area and such like so it's, the research is a lot easier to do and time team will give you what has been done how to do things so if you want to dig a, a test pit in your back garden time team explains how you should do it and how to record it and such like it's something for everyone within time team as i said time team is interesting for me because the family tie to my father who loved it i enjoyed it watched it with my father and i think it is something there's something for everyone within it have a look at it check out their website check out their youtube ta channel uh, just do a quick search for time team it'll take you straight to the channel but time team 20 years had whole the almost always you had the consistent team so you had tony phil mick you had john stewart you had Crenza, you had Raksha, you had helen you had robin you had francis some people were in early some people can were didn't turn up until late on and stuff like that but there was a constant flow of different people coming in and out um but you had a core group who lasted the full 20 years which was quite interesting for a 20 year reality show as such so give time team a look tell me what you think leave a comment subscribe um tag i'm now or not only on youtube i'm also on mines and i'm on odyssey i'll have the links in the description so if you want to go and look at the other channels most of my other stuff is on youtube at the moment i've not actually put a lot up on mines or odyssey so go over and have a look anyway thanks for watching and remember i'm not old i'm classic pg maybe <laughs>